we're really lucky to have her with us. So please uh, give her a warm welcome. So to give a brief bio about Mency in her career, she's been involved with breaking, defending, and building secure applications. She researched various languages and technologies, found insecure usage in customer code, and took just automation measures in finding vulnerabilities in error code binary static analysis. She's an avid traveler with the motto, if not now, then when? So please, once again, let's give a warm welcome to Mency Sheth. Thank you for uh, logging in to uh, listen me talk about uh, cryptography. Uh, before going ahead, uh, I'll definitely like to introduce myself. I am uh, Mansi Sheth. I work as a security researcher for a leading static analysis company called uh, Veracode. Uh, we have over uh, 2000 uh, customers across different uh, business verticals using all different kinds of uh, languages and uh, technologies available right now. Uh, my job is to be on top of that and even more importantly be on top of the latest and greatest happenings in the application security domain and uh, map these two uh, expertise into helping uh, find uh, anti-patterns in uh, customers uh, code bases. Uh, uh, cryptography is a huge aspect of uh, anything uh, security. Uh, I'm a huge crypto enthusiast. Uh, I've spent a reasonable amount of time understanding different uh, crypto systems and their internal workings and different uh, language implementations. Uh, so why cryptography? Uh, well, if you just stretch a little and look around yourself, you might be using half of these applications right at this moment. And everything is based on having a, a secure crypto systems underlying uh, in the underlying uh, layer. Uh, you might be uh, logged on to your company's uh, VPN portal or you might be uh, at the website you are using currently to watch this talk. Uh, you might be doing some Bitcoin mining under your desk to keep yourself warm, who knows, uh, or doing some uh, e-transactions or browsing some photographs stored somewhere. All the systems need uh, our data to definitely be confidential while, while it is roaming around on the internet or uh, stored somewhere on uh, on some cloud. Uh, we also expect uh, the crypto systems to provide us some integrity and authenticity services for your e-transactions or bank transfers or uh, while using your e-wallet. Uh, crypto is uh, important. It's used everywhere. Uh, it's not only you. It's uh, at this moment used by your uh, family and loved ones as well. Uh, it's a couple of decades old uh, system in modern computers it's age old uh, uh, age old technology used by even ancient humans as we all know so why do we see so many uh, crypto failures on a monthly basis if it's not sometimes bi-weekly or weekly basis well i think crypto is hard not more than two dozen people uh, fully understand every different aspects of every crypto primitive uh, available and how it can be broken or how secure it is uh, on top of it, uh, whenever a developer is building a crypto system, uh, he or she relies on the actual implementation provided by the library uh, he's, he or she is using. Uh, well, these libraries are good, but uh, and that's what you should be using, but it has its own set of uh, pitfalls or uh, things yet to be desired. For example, uh, the APIs are not intuitive enough. They are not uh, good enough security guidances in that, or uh, they are loaded with uh, insecure uh, code snippets. And even a well-meaning security conscious developer cannot be on top of latest and greatest things in the crypto field and completely very well understand this implementation to actually develop a foolproof secure crypto system. I, I firmly believe most of the uh, crypto bugs we uh, come across are not because of the poor implementations, but it's because of poorer understanding and usage in uh, in the application. And uh, that was my biggest motivation for this talk to help ease out that burden a little. Uh, well, before going too much into detail, uh, uh, I want to give some crypto disclaimers. Uh, never ever roll your own crypto. No matter how unique you think your application is, uh, please uh, use one of the uh, well vetted algorithms or uh, primitives out of a good implementation uh, you have access to. 
नेक्स्ट नो मैटर हाउ यू थिंक योर क्रिप्टो सिस्टम इज सॉलिड एंड फुल प्रूफ विच इज ग्रेट बट दैट डज नॉट गिव यू अ लाइसेंस टू इग्नोर ऑल अदर अप्लीकेशन सिक्योरिटी इश्यूज यू माइट बी एनकाउंटरिंग सो यू स्टिल हैव टू मिटिगेट योर सिक्वलाइज एंड एक्सेस इंजेक्शन एज रिक्वायर्ड uh lastly i understand not everyone has a liberty to choose their language of implementation or the library but if you do i would highly suggest using a uh, libsodium uh, library for any uh, crypto uh, needs of uh, any crypto needs it is uh, designed by or it is developed by cryptographers and uh, very senior security uh, developers it is a little opinionated library which means uh most of the uh, most of the things are secured default by uh, out of the box uh, very little choices are needed to be done by developer uh, which makes it uh, less error prone so i would highly recommend using uh, libsodium uh it already it also has a uh, wrappers in most of the modern languages i definitely know there is a wrapper available for uh, for libsodium in uh, python and php uh, so i would suggest using uh, that first we are going to talk about the basic crypto building blocks uh first one being uh, cryptographically secure pseudo random number generator i am going to say it as cspring it's quite a mouthful going ahead uh obviously your uh, encryption decryption and your hash functions uh these three make the most basic primitives of crypto but they are highly you uh, they are uh, very rarely used in isolation they usually uh, take in uh, in building up a uh, bigger uh, crypto application so next we are going to touch base upon uh, different crypto uh, applications for which there are uh, library implementation available right out of the box uh, uh, two of the symmetric encryption applications and uh, one of the public key application okay uh, first thing uh, cspring uh they are basically random looking numbers but what more do we expect out of it uh, well a lot more uh it should exhibit these three uh, properties the first being uh, looking at a random number output we should never be able to identify a pattern in it uh, next is it should be uh, completely unpredictable meaning looking at the current bit we should never be able to guess what the next bit is going to be or what even the previous bit was and lastly it should never be reproducible we should never be able to generate the same random number uh, more than once now how is this uh, how do we generate this numbers uh, well uh, the center of generating this uh, this highly secure uh, cspring are two aspects one is the actual algorithm which is used in generating the output well but that's not no, that's no fun like knowing the algorithm anyone can predict the output uh, it's about how this algorithm is seeded or what level of entropy is provided to that algorithm to churn it and produce this output is what is crucial so what are different entropy sources well it would have been awesome if uh, we could have ex- uh, we could have got some uh, non deterministic source of entropy outside your laptop but that's not practical so what is the next best source of entropy it's the one which your operating system provides your operating system can leverage uh, different kinds of uh, Uh, io interrupts like your keyboard or mouse or uh, or different or uh, or your uh, timing cycles or even your uh, sometimes your kernel and uh, developer space collect all that different sources uh, generate an a uh, source of entropy and provide it to the algorithm whenever it uh, requests one and then that algorithm will churn it further and give you a nice looking output uh where is this uh, thing used it's used in practically any crypto uh, system you are going to encounter it's used for your uh, key materials you needed for your encryption or your max or digital signatures or your uh, nonces and initialization vectors it's used for uh, salting while you are uh, going to store your uh, secure information and basically it's everywhere it's almost safe to say uh, your security of your crypto system is indirectly uh, not even indirect directly proportional to your source of entropy uh so it's uh, extremely important to pay, pay close attention to that uh, so uh, again uh, always choose your source of entropy which is provided by our operating system now your operating system provides uh, two different sources one is a blocking source and one is a non blocking source 
what does that mean is a non blocking source will provide a blocking source will provide you entropy only when it has sufficient information in its bucket before it gives it to the algorithm requesting algorithm and a non blocking is whatever entropy it has at a particular instant it will just give it to the requesting algorithm well for the most applications uh, a non blocking source of os entropy is good enough if if you think you are uh, not fitting in that 80% of the category sure go for a blocking source uh, second i just like to uh, point out uh, whenever you are trying to generate your csp rng in a virtual machine the entropy is provided by the guest operating system and not the host and guest does not have that level of high entropy and again when you snapshot a system it is already snapshot so uh, just be aware of that uh, phenomena and uh, definitely don't use any uh, hard coded seeds for entropy or uh, any even uh, time stamps are uh, not good enough uh, there have been a lot of attacks because of that one which comes to my mind is a uh, sony playstation attack which uh, generated its uh, digital signatures based on a hard coded uh, source of entropy so please don't do that we have already seen enough uh, mishaps around that uh talking about the actual algorithm always use an algorithm which is based on a good block cipher like aes or uh, or use the hash or a mac based algorithm uh there are algorithms based on uh, on weaker algo uh, uh, on weaker uh, block ciphers like uh, uh, 3ds or even a dual uh, elliptical curve uh, we all know the world uh, when uh, nsa uh, backdoor happened Uh, don't use uh, don't use any uh, math dot random uh, entropy or even for uh, uh, as a csp rng uh, there is nothing cryptographically secure about that so uh, please don't do that i have seen innumerable instances uh, just doing that uh, i'd like to point out some code snippets uh, again uh, which is which i have seen very commonly here uh, a timestamp is used to uh, explicitly uh, seed a pseudo random number generator in java uh, a hard coded seed is used please don't do these things uh, i had to put this uh, there uh, don't use math dot random as a as a, as a csp rng uh, even if you think you are using a, a secure hash uh, that does the output of a hash is not a csp rng either so don't use that for any kind of uh, any kind of your cs crng needs uh, i have seen this in the first two uh, stack overflow post where a uh, hash output is used as a secure uh, keying material don't do that uh, next let's start talking about the most famous uh, crypto primitive encryption well we obviously expect our data to be uh, confidential whenever it is in transit or uh, at rest it should only be accessed by people having access to the symmetric key uh, when most of our uh, data is uh, going to be on internet at some point uh, and for that to happen uh, we also need uh, some level of integrity and authenticity services out of a good encryption scheme uh, why is that so uh, imagine uh, there is a sender and a receiver like any encryption scheme and there is a, a adversary sitting in between uh, just sending a tampering with the cipher text and sending it to the receiver and getting information out of it a, a typical uh, padding oracle attack uh, we all know what happened uh, with uh, different uh, unauthenticated uh, encryption schemes being used in uh, tls most uh, notably the beast and the poodle attacks so it's extremely important for any modern encryption scheme to have uh authenticity as well as uh, integrity services in built in that now how does a uh, uh, well traditionally what used to happen is to get these two in, uh, services uh, we used to have our uh, typical unauthenticated uh, cipher uh, and then we used to use a message authentication code to provide us all the services well it worked well but it is just uh, too many crypto uh, cr uh, too many crypto primitives involved made it slower much more error prone lesser uh, uh, crypto analysis and uh, it was just not working out very well and most importantly when most of the application needs this services it should not be just confined to uh, some uh, important protocols and uh, protocol implementers 
Uh, so uh, having a uh, having such a crypto scheme out of box was extremely important, uh, and that's what uh, we should be uh, using going ahead. So how does it actually work? Uh, well, uh, we should be using authenticated encryption with something called as associated data, and what that is, uh, I'll just explain. Uh, well, at the core of it, it is still a traditional encryption scheme where you have your plain text, your uh, symmetric keys, your initialization vectors, and your good encryption algorithm. Uh, when all this thing is passed through that algorithm, we get the cipher text and life is good. And similar thing happens on the decryption side. Now for authenticated encryption, uh, we did a little bit more than that. Uh, we meaning the crypto community did a little bit more than that. Is a, we have uh, we also uh, give out an authentication tag, which is what is uh, providing the integrity and authenticity uh, checks on that uh, cipher scheme. Well, in addition to uh, this, there is something called as uh, associated data, uh, which is basically passed in plain text from sender to receiver. It takes part in the encryption, uh, encryption and the authentication and cipher text generation part, but it is uh, but it is still uh, passed in plain text. Imagine an IP address, it still needs to be in plain text, but the payload needs to be encrypted. So this is the scheme uh, which should be used out of the box uh, going ahead. Uh, and this is how encryption works. And uh, on the decryption side, again, uh, it works very similarly like a traditional decryption uh, with this is you uh, you give it uh, your decryption scheme, you give it your cipher text, your uh, authentication tag, uh, associated data, symmetry key and IB. And once all, if all of this matches a good looking uh, cipher, a good looking, uh, the corresponding plain text is given to you, obviously with your associated uh, associated data as well. So uh, what are these uh, authenticated encryption with associated data scheme look like? So uh, it is still a block cipher, uh, use uh, one of the most uh, famous block cipher AES. Uh, there are a few other block ciphers out there on uh, outside the United States which are used. Uh, they are good enough as well. Uh, the only blocks, not the only, the block, the most famous block cipher uh, mode of operation is uh, GCM. It is not patented or uh, protected by any patents in any other countries. It's fast enough. Uh, use that. Uh, most of the languages have an implementation out of the box called AES CCM uh, schemes. Uh, just use those uh, implementations. Uh, any block cipher will need a good padding scheme. Use uh, PKCS uh, 5 or uh, 7. If not that, then uh, 5. Sometimes languages, the implementations just uh, reverse the names based on the uh, the scheme uh, or the underlying block, underlying workings of it, basically. Uh, key sizes. Uh, world is not going to fall apart if you just use 128, but I highly recommend using 256. Uh, it should be generated with a very strong uh, CSP RNG and it should be top secret. It should be saved. Uh, it should be a top secret one. Uh, Nonsense, the underlying block is uh, of AES GCM is uh, 96 bits. So that much is enough. It should be unique. Uh, we are going to talk about a little later. Uh, never reuse your key and IV pairs for uh, more than one uh, block, uh, one uh, piece of uh, message. Again, it should be a uh, very uh, strong CSPRG generated and secret as well. The authentication tags size should be at least 128 bits, uh, obviously to avoid any uh, brute force uh, attacks. Uh, so this is a template on which any uh, AST, any authenticated uh, encryption uh, block cipher based scheme should be used and you should be good. Uh, I also want to draw your attention to this uh, new kid on the block uh, based on uh, a stream cipher called uh, Salsa. Um, the more modern version of it is uh, Chacha and it has its own underlying authentication scheme called uh, Poly1305. A lot of languages, uh, Java, uh, even uh, Cryptography.io, they all have started having implementations of it out of the box. So uh, if uh, if for some reason, after some time, AES GCM has some flaws, the internet cannot just stop working. So our uh, forefathers, cryptographic forefathers, have already foreseen that situation and uh, are trying to uh, push this out. Uh, there is decent enough uh, crypto analysis done on it. It's safe enough. It's uh, most importantly, it's a much uh, slow, it's much faster compared to AES. So 
uh, certain IoT devices or Android phones or something uh, or, or those kind of things might not be able to handle uh, AES uh, encryption scheme. Uh, this is a great idea for that. And most importantly, even Google and uh, Cloudflare have actually started using this in their TLS protocol. So knowingly or unknowingly, even right now, 20 to 30 percent of uh, Internet websites are actually using that. So uh, don't shy away from this if you have to use it. But there's still nothing wrong with uh, AES. Uh, okay, I just want to uh, point out uh, things you should be uh, worry about or you should just ignore right now. Just have a selective ignorance for all this uh, in your uh, typical uh, crypto library. Uh, most of the libraries still support legacy algorithms. Uh, they, they have been deprecated. They have been broken. There are much better alternatives avo uh, available now. Just avoid that. Uh, these are some of the th things uh, supported by .NET in the latest 3.1 uh, version as well. Uh, lots of uh, unauthenticated uh, blocks or cipher modes are still uh, available, uh, again, for legacy reasons. Uh, none of the block cipher, none of these modes are, uh, they are not going to uh, leak plain text, but it is still unauthenticated. It's uh, no point using it anymore. Uh, Padding schemes also, there are many available. Uh, just ignore all these things. Um, uh, OAP padding is more a uh, public key RSA thing. Uh, we'll talk about it later, but uh, just focus on using the right PKCS uh, 5 or 7 uh, padding going ahead. Uh, next, let's talk about uh, hash functions. Uh, these are one of the most simplest uh, crypto primitive, but one of the most important, any kind of integrity checks, be it through uh, message authentication codes or digital signatures uses this. It's used for uh, any kind of uh, uh, file integrity checks uh, you might need, uh, hard, di uh, hard disk encryption uh, integrity checks. Uh, how does it work is uh, you have this whole uh, blurb of uh, plain text data. It passes through this hash function and gives out a fixed uh, a length output uh, it has no keys so that's the great part so there is not a hell lot of uh, keying material involved in fact there's no keying material involved at all the output can be called as tags or checksums or hash or uh, whatever uh, there's a few words i can think about right now uh, what are some of the key uh, services we expect out of a, a simple hash function is uh, it should uh, let it come out. Okay, it should be collision resist resistant. So no two plain text should have the same uh, cipher, uh, same uh, tag. It should be one way. Given uh, one input, it should generate a, always generate that particular hash output. And uh, finally, it should be uh, unpredictable. So uh, those are some of the key uh, properties we expect out of a hash function. And most importantly, it should have a strength of at least 128 bits. What I mean is it should not, the output should be at least greater than 128 bits to avoid any kind of uh, brute forcing attempts on the hash. Uh, I'll just keep it simple. Always use SHA-2 or SHA-3 family of algorithms. Uh, Blake and Shake have been uh, recently approved by uh, government authorities. Uh, they are uh, seen in few implementations, not all, but uh, these are the only safe ones. Uh, yeah, there are applications where SHA-224 would be acceptable and or it would be deprecated in a few years or few it is not allowed. I would say just keep it simple unless you absolutely know what you are doing, uh, then that's the only time using it. But you have better alternatives available anyway, so why bother? Next, let's start talking about uh, some of the symmetric key based uh, application as uh, we spoke about earlier all these primitives very rarely work in isolation they are usually part of a uh, application so the first being uh, message authentication codes for any of your integrity or authenticity uh, needs uh, these are usually used uh, one of the most famously used application right now is for your uh, api keys so how does this work you again have a sender and a receiver. Uh, the sender has, uh, the both of these parties have access to the same symmetric key. Uh, on the sender side, the plain text is encrypted with the symmetric key through a MAC algorithm and a, as, and a particular MAC tag is generated. 
the actual plain text and this Mac is passed on to the receiver side where the same computation is uh, repeated. Uh, even receiver has access to the symmetric key so it can generate the Mac. If the incoming Mac and the Mac generated on the receiver side match, you have integrity and uh, authenticity, uh, authenticity checks. So again, uh, what should you should be worried about? Uh, always base your uh, Mac algorithms on SHA-2 or SHA-3 family of algorithms. Your security stra strength of a Mac is based on a few different internal factors, which uh, for, for your case, uh, just make sure the key size you use is uh, greater than 128 bits. Uh, always protect your symmetric key. That goes without saying, but I still have to mention that because I've seen many mishaps about it. And uh, lastly, there have been uh, constructions based on uh, block cipher based uh, Mac algorithms. I would say just avoid that. A few of the bouncy castles still uh, supports them. Uh, there are just too many keys involved, a few more crypto, uh, and uh, it's much more fragile than uh, the ones which are available uh, based on uh, um, HMAX, based on hashes. So just use that. Uh, next application is uh, storing uh, passwords or storing any uh, secrets uh, for your, uh, which is secret to your, uh, important to your business. So uh, traditionally, we have been hashing and salting and peppering all this, uh, all this uh, password or secrets uh, before storing it, and we never store the plain text, uh, which is all great. But with today's modern uh, hardware advances, uh, those things are pretty trivial to uh, break. So I would say use uh, uh, this category of algorithms called uh, key derivation, uh, uh, derivation uh, the key derivation functions, KDFs. Uh, there are two categories of them. Uh, one is adaptive functions, which is just based on repetitive, repeating the crypto applications for thousands and thousands of times and deliberately slowing it. So basically uh, nullifying the brute forcing uh, attempts. But uh, these are not uh, powerful enough for the current and, uh, or, and for future proofing your applications. But uh, PBKDF and uh, Bcrypt are uh, one of uh, the important adaptive functions right now and only PBKDF is uh, government approved. So if you have to use it, I would say at least have your uh, work factor, uh, which is at least 200k, 300k or even 500k if your hardware can uh, support it. Uh, if you don't have to abide by that, I would say use a more uh, memory focused uh, KDF called Argon2. Uh, what it does is, it, in addition to uh, repeating your uh, crypto uh, underlying crypto function, it also uh, uses a bit of, uh, not a bit, a lot of uh, configurable memory to, uh, to populate it over and over again. So that almost... Uh, uh, reduces the attempt of a uh, cracking offline cracking by a huge margin compared to adaptive or like way more compared to other traditional uh, methods so uh, key takeaway uh, use argon2 if you can if you have to use pbkdf use a very strong and a very higher uh, work factor what your uh, systems can uh, support okay let's uh, briefly talk about uh, asymmetric key uh, cryptography or uh, public key cryptography uh, unlike uh, symmetric key uh, cryptography, uh, there are there is a key pair involved. There is not a single key. Uh, one of the uh, one of the piece of the pair is uh, supposed to be kept private, called as private key, and one is public information, called as public key. Now, over years, there have been different ways this uh, key pair has been generated. One of the most uh, common being using prime numbers for the famous uh, RSA algorithm. Uh, well, over time, uh, RSA algorithm has uh, proved to be more fragile than uh, initially thought uh, due to its simplicity of the math involved or uh, the padding oracles around it. Uh, it has just been uh, more and more fragile with uh, time. So uh, the cryptography industry is, uh, is uh, trying to promote using uh, elliptical uh, key ba uh, based uh, key generation, uh, key pair generation and algorithms based on uh, that so uh, briefly talking about how this uh, elliptical uh, key cryptography works is uh, there is this uh, line drawn with its equation uh, which has obviously its uh, coefficients and uh, based on number of uh, points on that curve the key pair is being generated so uh, 
uh, only one piece of information in this whole equation is private, which is the actual private key out of the pair. And the public key is obviously public, the coefficients are public. And uh, luckily, most of the public key uh, based algorithms have a counter uh, elliptic curve algorithm available for it to be used in, uh, directly out of its implementation. Uh, well, elliptical key cryptography is not a novel concept. It has been in existence since 19, mid 1980s. Uh, over time, there have been a lot of curves which has been proposed and uh, are in wide circulation. I would say uh, just use the Edward curves, uh, with especially, especially the 255, 19 and 448 curves. Uh, NIST has approved a lot of uh, curves. Uh, not all are uh, sufficiently secured or has sufficient enough uh, security strength. I would say if you if you have to pick a NIST based curve, uh, pick a curve which has security strength of at least 120, uh, one, uh, 112 bits and uh, ignore all other curves. Uh, mentioning the public key applications and the corresponding uh, API, uh, APIs for it. For digital signatures, we have the ED25519 and the corresponding 448 one. For key exchange ones, we have the same curves in the in its uh, in, uh, for uh, its use, and uh, you also have a asymmetric encryption algorithm ECIES for it. Uh, it's not as common and widespread use due to its uh, limitations of the amount of data it can actually encrypt. Uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about today about all different aspects of uh, crypto primitives. Uh, it's again uh, very important for us to keep it secure and uh, the responsibility lies among all of us to keep this world a more uh, secure place. Uh, finally, I'd just like to uh, point you to my uh, GitHub repo where all the prescriptive ways of uh, doing all the crypto primitives is uh, being mentioned and uh, 